back on the server today guys and I'll be honest it's been a while since I've worked on this probably a couple of weeks now uh, due to just being busy with work and I'll also be honest I have no idea what I'm going to be doing I don't know how today's video is going to go um, I'm sure I've already put in the title give you some sort of inclination of what we're going to do um, but yeah I'm just going to start doing stuff and hopefully that leads me down a rabbit hole and we can start progressing further on. Now in the last video obviously we found the wiring loom for the ECU that was completely gone um, and yeah I hope today I suppose I can try and either rectify that or give up on that and start taking the body off. So I think we're going to start with a lot of people will have requested and that is get a hoover in the engine bay. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is the wiring for the car comes into the bulkhead through here somewhere. I'm not too sure where, I can't see yet. So I'm gonna remove the header tank and get that out of the way, because um, I'm sure we're gonna to have to get it out of the way anyway. So there may be some good news. I've just been looking back inside the car and I've managed to pull this little panel down here which was just held in, uh, held in with a screw that side. This side is still stuck, however, uh, yet more rubbish. However, there is a plug there which looks like it has the same sort of wiring as my loom. So, I'm not sure yet. What I'm gonna do is gonna get the hoover in there, just hoover that out, see if I can remove this panel. And fingers crossed I have some sort of connector in there. Right, so after playing around in here and trying to work out where that wiring loom goes to for the ECU, I've managed to get it out the bulkhead. Um, pulled it out of here. There's the hole for the bulkhead and I have the wiring loom just here, look. So as you can see, it splits the branches off here and there's two sensors, one that was just plugged and another one that was just a plug as well down there. But there is my main wiring loom. So. I guess if I had a wiring loom, I could now completely strip this, all the casing off this wire. So I've literally just got wires everywhere and it would be a very, very long process, but I could obviously trace each wire back to wherever it goes and then use the pin out for that on the ECU to then wire it up. I mean, that would literally take all day to do that. Um, so, that, I mean, that is an option, but realistically, I'd either want to find a replacement loom or uh, and maybe a standalone ECU. I think that's what a lot of people do. And I think that is quite actually a good upgrade for these cars because the, the current ECU doesn't have that many sensors apparently and it's not that great. So standalone ECUs can massively improve every aspect of running the car. So that is an option as well um, because let's be honest, that ECU didn't look great. It probably doesn't work either. Um, I've been told there's a CMOS battery or something inside them that if they've been standing for too long, they'll go dead and the ECU won't work. So that could have that as well. So at the minute, yeah, I don't think there's really much more I can do with this until I find a solution. So I'm gonna forget trying to get the engine running before we strip this thing completely down. May not be a bad thing. I mean, it does turn over, the bores looked fine. Uh, so I don't think there is gonna be an issue with the engine. And to be honest, it might not be the bad, uh, worst thing in the world, completely stripping it and um, yeah, doing it properly before we try and start it for the first time. Anyway, so I am going to now start taking this body off and as the car's off the ramp, I'm gonna do probably what I can at the front here where I've got the most room. So I believe we'll obviously need to remove the rest of our wiring from the car. Um, stuff like, I haven't looked, but probably brake pipes, fuel lines, some other bits around here, some more wiring down the side. And then I think we've got to remove our radiator um, aircon, if it has aircon, I don't even know if it has aircon, does it? Oil, something to do with oil, I don't even know. But yeah, removing all this at the front here, so then the body can just lift off straight from the front, and then we'll get it onto the ramp, and then we'll take that passenger seat out and start removing the body mountings. And we've also got fuel tank as well to remove in the back. 
So as I've probably mentioned before, I know nothing about this engine. Um, I assume this is the oil tank, which means does it have a dry sump like the RS6? I do not know. Is there even oil in it? I mean, there's oil in it. So if this is the reservoir, then I guess it's a dry sump. I don't know. Uh, it makes sense with a car so low to the ground, I suppose, but we will have to remove that. We'll have to remove the radiator. So I'm going to start doing it now. Probably going to put it on a time lapse because I don't know what I'm doing. So everything I'm going to be doing now is for the first time. So I need to work out the best way to do it. Yeah, so there's actually quite a lot of fluid in the car. So there's fluid in the radiator. The oil tank has a load of oil in. Power steering fluid's full as well. Uh, so yeah, I had to kind of um, get the golf off the ramp, put the TV on the ramp, get it in the air so we can drain the fluid. So then, um, yeah, I might as well start from underneath. So remove exhaust system, under trays. Yeah, so we're just gonna crack on. And um, now it's up in the air, we'll start doing underneath. those under trays removed got some more crap come out as well um i'm gonna try and leave the engine in because this is a speed six so it's not as thick as a v8 so i think you can leave the engine in whilst taking the body off which i'm going to try and do so i don't know if i have to disconnect much up here um i'm literally just gonna have to play it by ear but i am going to remove the exhaust i'm going to try and remove it from here take the back box off um and yeah i don't know i'm just kind of winging it I've had a look and there's obviously loads of points to like here look, to remove from the body, but I'm going to kind of do those ones last. So yeah, just keep going really. I'm just about there with the front end. As you saw, radiator condenser both removed, made a load of mess. Uh, there's an earth strap that I've removed from the chassis, uh, a few plugs for the radiator which I've removed. Um, yeah, just I've there's a chassis, the chassis bolts here for the body are one there and one there. Both of them snapped off. Um, as you can see, one bolt there, look. So they are out. Um, there you've got power steering here, which is two of the hoses. Not sure what the other hose is for. Um, I'm guessing it's that one that runs along the bottom there, but I'm not sure what it does. However, as you can see, I've actually just cut them uh, purely because there was nowhere to really drain the power steering fluid from. Uh, all the connectors up in there are rusty as hell, so they weren't coming undone. And I just thought if I cut them there, I'm replacing all these hoses anyway because they're all perished and horrible. So if I just thought if I cut it there, look where there's a hole and I can drain in the oil and that will be the, probably the easiest way to do it, make the least amount of mess. So I'm pretty much done at the front here now. I can't see anything else stopping it from coming off. So I'm now going to draw my attention to the rear of the vehicle. Now I believe we have to remove the fuel tank. So I'm going to have to remove all these uh, control modules. Uh, get all the wiring out of the way, rip all the carpet up, and I think there's probably a few bolts along the top. And obviously we've already drained the tank, so then it would just be a case of hopefully just lifting the tank out. Um, I'm hoping it's as simple as that, and that may reveal some more bolts, I have no idea. Um, a couple of, obviously you've seen obviously removed the passenger seat as well. I have started undoing the body bolts that were underneath, however, 
and I've re uh, removed the rear benches as well so I can get the seatbelt anchors. Um, but the annoying thing is everything's a nut and bolt so I am going to need uh, help probably for my dad uh, to be able to undo all these because I can't obviously undo the bolt and hold the, the top of the bolt and undo the nut at the bottom so yeah it's going to be a bit more tricky but I feel like we're getting there I don't know how much more after that there is to do to get a body off I'm not too sure I'm going to obviously I've said before I'm going to leave the engine in situ and then take it out afterwards but I'm quietly optimistic however I guarantee I'm missing something and it's going to be a big old job to do I'm hoping this will just pull out. I think I've yeah, I've disconnected that and, and this. So I don't know what's actually pull up. Right, the two rear bolts for the body, there's one here and there's one there, so I'm hoping because these are a bit more internal, they should come off okay. Get onto this one, there's five glasses over it. There we go. Right, so that's the fuel tank all out and all okay. Uh, got the two rear body bolts out as well, as you just saw. And I've also gone and disconnected the seat belts, apart from that one, because it's right under the carpet, and I think I've got to rip the carpet up to get to it. But I've undone the rear anchors, both sides, so they're all done. Um, yeah, so we're in a pretty good position, I think. So that's going to be end of part one of removing the body. Uh, pretty sure on the next one, I say only, but um, we've got to remove fuel lines, steering arm, um, some brake pipes probably, just finish getting the wiring out from the cab uh, and remove them body bolts. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, there might be a few things I've missed. I have to do a little bit more research, but other than that, I think it's going okay. <laughs> Let me know what I'm missing badly in the comments because I'm sure there's something, um, I feel like there's something big that I'm missing because it seems fairly simple so far. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope you did enjoy the video. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and also follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage. And yeah, I shall see you in part two of getting this body off. Cheers guys.